All right, what's going on guys? Today we're gonna to talk about the deload. Um, the deload is probably one of the most important things to training. So you can train hard, you can train long, you can make progress, but it's not going to continue if you don't deload. Um, something I wish I would have done since I started training, but you live and, li you live and you learn, right? So, okay, the deload. Um, I have this little note thing here. So I can make sure I get all the info. Hopefully it's not too distracting for you guys. But my personal definition of the deload, I'm just going to make it up on the spot, would just simply to be to sensitize and heal your body from all the processes of training and overloading with consistency so that you can continually do so. So it just allows you to continually do it effectively and um, safely. Continually train effectively and safely. Um, okay, so why, why, why would you want to deload? What's the point, right? So why don't you just go hard all the time? Why don't you just, you know, um, you know, no days off, you know, never take a break. So it prevents the imbalances of performance and recovery. So those are the two things that we need to watch out for. How you perform, how you overload, how you progress, how you get better and the way in which you recover. So if you don't deload, your recovery is going to go down and your performance is going to go down. If your recovery is up, you're able to recover, you're able to make adaptations, your performance is going to go up, you're going to be able to continually pre pre present overload. Um, yeah, so your, your ability to present overload will go down. And that won't just be for one day either. That'll be consistently over time. So if you have a weaker day, that's that. But um, over time, if your performance is going down, you may need to assess your deload structuring. Um, all right, so other reasons why you may want to deload um, to prevent overuse injury. You get a little achy joints, you get achy knees, stuff like that, prevent that. Um, sensitize yourself to training. So the stimulus starts to mean less. If you beat yourself into the ground every single day, your body gets used to it. Your body is made to adapt, to evolve, and to overcome circumstance. So with that, if your body is starting to get used to the training, it needs to sensitize, it needs to revitalize, because you can't just do 20 million sets. Not only will that be not beneficial for recovery, but overall, um, you'll hurt your joints, your ligaments, your hormones, you'll have increase cortisol when we talk about overreaching over training later. So you can't just literally progress to 50 million sets per body part. You need to sensitize, recuperate, so that eight sets still means a lot to your body. So if eight sets starts to mean nothing to your body, why does it have a reason to grow? Okay, so you need a super, this, the deload is gonna help you super compensate strength and actually size. It's gonna help you build muscle because you build muscle while you're resting, recuperating, restoring, and uh, the deload is the time to do that. So with that, we're going to take ourselves into who should deload. Everybody should be deloading, okay? If you're training, you're training effectively, you're training with overload, you're training with the right principles, you're gonna accumulate fatigue. Fatigue is not a lie, as Charlie says. Um, my brother is Charlie. Follow him on Instagram, at Chuck the Jellyfish Lifter. Tons of great posts. Um, everyone should deload, but, We'll get into the differences between advanced and beginners later. So stay tuned for that. Boom, boom, bada, boom. Advanced versus beginners. Who should be the most deloader persons in the gym room? <laughs> boom, boom, boom. Yeah, I'm a nerd. Get over it. Um, all right, cues. Earn it in the way, know how. Um, so how do you deload? How do you go about it, Drew? Um, you reduce your sets by... 40%. So if you're doing 10 sets of back, you, you're, you're minimal. You're minimal. So we'll get into periodization later. So there's minimal effective volume. Um, then there, there's your MAV and your MRV. You take 40% of your minimal. So if you're minimal for, um, if your minimal volumes for back were six sets, you'd go down to about four sets. So ish. So it's not exact, but you want to go down to about 60% of your regular volumes, reduce it by 40%. And you reduce your weights by 20%. So 
if you're doing, um, you guys can do the math, you can figure it out. But if it's a bodyweight exercise like pull-ups, I kind of just take off 20% of the reps-ish, which is kind of my way of going about it. So if you're doing 10 reps with pull-ups, you might do eight, but um, that's kind of a different story for a different time. But in and of itself, 20% off of the weight, so 80% loads. Okay, um, and by default, by reducing your sets um, and your weight, you're reducing your overall volume. So volume to sets times reps times weight. So if you're reducing your sets and you're reducing your weight, you're reducing volume, and volume is the uh, main contributor to fatigue um, over intensity. A study done by Brad Schoenfeld indicated that such, that volume was much more fatiguing than just intensity, which makes sense because volume is sets times reps times weight. Intensity is just weight. So intensity is just one of the variables that go into volume. And by reducing your sets and your weight, you're reducing your proximity to failure. So obviously if you're reducing your normal weights and you're doing less sets overall, it's going to be easier. So there's not, it's just going to be lower RPE and it's going to be lower proximity to failure. Um, cues. Um, for beginners, I mean, obviously your deloads are going to be structured in, but for people doing it their first time, you know, when should I deload? How do I know if I should deload? And uh, um, stuff like that. So for beginners, I would recommend that you get out before the issues occur. So you don't want to get out when your joints ache a lot, when your sleep sucks, when your energy levels are poor, stuff like that. You want to get out before that. But that being said, you still, that's just, that's an optimal, that's an optimal circumstance. But um, a practical circumstance, and the circumstances you're going to have to deal with nine times out of ten is to push through, um, push through those things in order to reap super compensation. So, yes, we want to get out before those problems occur. So if we could run our perfect mesocycle with everything going right, and no energy reduction, no fatigue accumulated, and hit all of our numbers and do everything we wanted to do. Perfect. But just because you start to feel less sleep, less energy, lower progress than expected, aches and pains, doesn't mean you stop the muscle cycle because you need to dig the hole in order to super compensate and end up gaining more in the end. Okay? So, frequency of the deload. How often should you deload? I would say after every mesocycle. So we'll get into periodization later, but after every mesocycle is a good cue for you guys to look at because after every mesocycle would be a good time to sensitize, recuperate, and grow from all of your all of your efforts. Um, so with that, just about every four weeks regularly. regularly because I usually run a muscle cycle about every four weeks. Um, or a three week length muscle cycle, but then the deload comes in the fourth week, so by def so in technicality, it's a every four week deload. Um, yeah, so you're gonna need to deload because you're gonna be building manageable fatigue. Manageable fatigue, so you're not digging a huge hole that you can't fill up and super compensate, get bigger, get stronger, gain size with, but in order to grow, we need to dig the hole, fill it up, and then super compensate. So we're building manageable fatigue, fatigue that we can recover from, overcome, and grow from. So um, you should need the deload. You should need the deload. There's, there's no circumstance if you're training effectively and you're training right that you're not going to build manageable fatigue, that you need to take the deload after every muscle cycle or every four weeks. People are like, oh, I feel great after my muscle cycle. Well, then you just didn't push it hard enough during the muscle cycle. Um, so who needs to deload more, the beginners or the advanced? Most people think the beginners, but actually um, the advanced should deload more because the advanced are doing... You need more sets to stimulate generally because over time you build up a tolerance regardless of how much you sensitize and come back. The advanced still need more time to, um, they still need more sets kind of, we can get into that later again, there's a lot of runoff topics we go down, but overall advanced generally need more sets because they need more volume. Um, 
and advanced do more volume. So the advanced lift more weight, they do more sets, and by default they do more volume. And as we noted down here, volume is the main contributor to fatigue. And their intensity is higher. So overall, the more advanced athletes have more fatigue to manage with. So thus, the advanced people need to deload more. Um, beginners, they need to deload, yes. Sure, they have less reason to deload because beginners can progress just based upon almost anything. They're getting in, stimulating, and going to grow, make adaptations, unless they're digging such a big hole that they can't grow from, which happens a lot, actually. Um, but beginners progress more linearly. Advanced people progress more by um, pushing it hard, building up the fatigue, reaching their baseline again, and then super compensating, growing, and uh, coming back to their baseline. Um, food. Food, 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 food. Should you drop your calories because you're moving less, you're burning less, you're doing less? If you need to sensitize, it'd probably be a good time to drop your calories, but that being said, to make sure you're in a surplus because you do need a surplus to grow and make adaptations with, assuming that you are in a surplus, or assuming that you're on a bulk. If you're on a cut, that's a different story. Obviously, you're going to be in a deficit either way. But if you're in a gaining phase, don't go into a deficit just because you're burning less, you're deloading. Your body needs those calories to grow from what you've done, what you have done, and lead into what you will do. So that is a huge thing. But if you need to drop your calories to sensitize, to, um, to get a little bit leaner because you got a little chubby over your bulk. That's fine. That's great. Do what you need to do. But just make sure you're in a surplus. But yeah, you are going to be burning less. So I see what you're going there. And we almost fixed. We almost forgot length. How long should you deload? How long should you deload? Um, deload should last one week. Okay. So I start my deloads off with two days off, and then I do maybe five deload workouts, and uh, that's it. Um, should you switch up your movements on a deload? Only if you're building intolerances or joint aches or pains from doing the same movements all the time. So I would say depends. It's good to keep movements because it's easier to track your ability to reduce sets from it and more so weight. So if you're doing cables, you take 20% off of 220 on the cable machine. It's easier to take it off there than move over to a different cable machine where maybe the load of 220 there is 110 there and 20% off there is 20% off. Like it's just so much different to a chronic weight. If you want to change movements, I would recommend changing it mesocycle to mesocycle, but leaving out the deload because it's harder to account the weight for the reduction of volumes. Um, compounds, I just recently, hold on, let me make sure this is still filming. Okay, we're good. We're bingo, bingo, bongo, boom, 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 bada, boom. Ooh, wait, watch this. Ah, ooh, ah, ooh, boop, 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 ah. Okay, so I just found this out. I was becoming detrained from doing deloads without the compound movement. So I come back week one of the deload and I'd be weaker. Weaker, right? Isn't that great? Weaker. Yeah, I got weaker. Um, a slight detrained value from deloading. It's fine. But if you're coming back extremely weaker from taking, you know, a week off, two weeks off, because the way my split worked, I was doing deload. I was doing my deadlifts first on my MRV, my high volume week, and I was doing, um, then I took the whole rest of the MRV week, the whole rest of the high volume weeks, so that was a set in seven days, and then the seven days of the deload, that was almost two weeks without training the compound lifts for the deadlift. So I was becoming detrained, so if you're coming detrained after deload, to an extreme extent, probably not good. So I'll leave the compounds in there, work on form, make sure you're still neurologically connected how you want to be, and, uh, don't lose your ability to be efficient, effective, and your body knowing how to do those lifts right. So work on form. Make sure you don't get too detrained. Keep the compounds in there to still keep a good, nice stimulus. And uh, like I said, work on form because form is paramount. We're going to do a video on that because form is the top of the tree for everything else. If form's not in place, nothing is going to work. Um, concerns. People say, I'm going to get smaller from doing less volume. No, you will not. Um, you will make, you'll get bigger. You're actually going to grow tissue. You may look smaller, so you may look like you have less tissue because there's less blood in the body, in the muscles because you're not as pumped up. You haven't been training as much. You're doing less volumes. There's less blood in that muscle, so you're going to be less pumped. 
but in and of itself, growth occurs when you are recovering. So recover and get bigger. You may look smaller temporarily because there's less blood in the body, but don't freak out because you're going to get bigger. And no, you won't get, you won't lose size in a week. That's not how it works. Um, with that, some people do say that they do get look bigger um, when they take a couple days off because their body just assimilates glycogen more. I don't know, but that's just teach their own. So hopefully you guys learned a little bit about the deload. Let me know what you think, but it is paramount to make sure you incorporate the deload into your training. Um, the way I do my deloads though is, so if this was your low volume week, medium volume week, high volume week, a lot of people put their deloads right next to their week one and then this week one isn't is pretty far away from week two and three so their week one's like kind of like a deload 2.0 the way i structure my mesocycles is i go deload way down here and then one two and three are all overloading and progressive that's just the way i look at it all three weeks of the mesocycle should be progressive and then the deload you come all the way back sensitize and get ready to build up one two three Go hard, go strong, and overload the muscle! Whoa! whoa. Nice catch, Drew. All right, thank you guys for tuning in. Like, comment, subscribe. Doing a lot of research and time with these videos, so it would mean a lot if you guys could subscribe for more content. Like and leave a comment if you have any questions or video ideas for me to shoot about. Thank you very much, sucker.